Welcome to the Local Government Spatial Reference Group Workshop. Uh, I'm James Day from Cedar Whittlesea, and I'm here to walk you through the integration of um, ROSE disruption data, which is in RID, to GIS. So this workshop demonstrates the practical use of Python um, to access and obtain um, spatial data from the APIs and then store that information into a Geo database, shapefile, or ArcGIS Online. So I do have sample scripts that for you to run, and you don't need any coding. You should have been provided a zip file, and unzip that file, and you'll get these folder structures. Um, unzip it in say C. That's just a C root folder, and then here I've got it under C, and then the root folder with um, the subfolders uh, underneath. So I've got like a geodatabase script folder and a shapefile folder. And the Rose disruption folder is a ArcGIS Pro project. So if you don't have ArcGIS Pro, um, you can use QGIS. But I've just got a desk for me to um, use. The things you'll need is internet access. Um, you, if you have Postman, that's good. You can use Postman to test out the API. Otherwise, you can use um, just the uh, the Big Roads website, which I'll show you later. You can use um, QGIS if you don't have ArcGIS Pro again, and you need a um, PDF viewer and internet browser. And of course, the Word document to read this file. And so there's three tutorials in the workshop. Um, the aim of the tutorial um, is to give you a step-by-step -step process to how to actually access the APIs and and then extract that data and then put it into a JS format. So for tutorial one, uh, we will be exploring the API on DataVic. We'll I'll show you how to get a security token, which you need to access the API and how to uh, query the data. And tutorial two um, is when we actually test the data and and we can test that on the website itself, or we can use Postman. And then for tutorial three, we um, are going to run the Python script. So I've provided sample scripts. Again, you don't need to do coding. You just need to run it, and you'll see that the data has been pulled from the APIs and then and then converted and placed into either shapefiles or geodatabase in, or a feature layer. So let's start the tutorial one. So in tutorial one, um, go to datavic.gov, search for um, this and say planned. There we go. So you want the unplanned disruptions. Click on that, do a search. So we come to this page, just click on the link. And it's important that you understand how the API works. So you need to read the information, um, download the PDF, take a look at that as well. So I'm going through this quite quickly, but you should actually spend some time in reading this material, understanding what data is re uh, returned, what type. So here we've got a um, feature which is returned, and we also got attribute information. So going back to this, um, if we click on here, we get to the Big Roads details, API details page. So here, um, notice that we're on version two. Version one for unplanned disruption is going to be decommissioned. And we, so we have to use version two. And this is the URL to call the um, API, the requests. And we've got parameters here that you can use. So you need to really understand how this works. And as I said again, read this material, understand it. Now, to get the token, you have to click here, and then you need to sign up, get an account here. So I've already done that. Um, I've got a, a login. So I'll let you spend some time to go and set yourself an account. But I've got an account, and I've logged in. And the token, when you log in, um, the token is under profile. And if you show that, that's the that's the token that you need. Copy that and keep that handy.
So that ends tutorial one. The next tutorial is we're going to test the API. So you've got the token and we need to make sure that that works. So if we go back to that page, so let's go back to, sorry for clicking through this, go back to resource. So this is the Big Roads API details page and this little green button, we can try it out. So you click here. Now go back to your um, token. Just going to copy this. Now, in the documentation, I've put the token in, and this is actually um, our own little C token, but you will need to use your own token. Um, I'm going to be resetting that token after the workshop. You can, I guess you can try it out with our token at the moment. But if you do have your own token, go ahead and, and use it. So I'm going to paste my token in here. And I just click send. And this is the response that I get. So this response is in a GeoJSON format. Uh, it looks like it's working. Okay. Now I like to use Postman. Postman's more professional. So um, I've got my Postman page here and I'm going to go and copy this URL. I'm going to leave out the page and the limit parameters at the moment. Copy this page so in here. And then we need to also have that token. So I'm going to just copy it from there. I need to put I've got to put under the header. So that's parameters. Headers is under here. Let me move this. So I've got the header with the token. And then I've got the parameters, which I've left a blank. I could put in limit and page to test it out, but I just want to test this out first. So here I'm getting a, um, a response that I wanted, which is the GeoJSON. So with Postman, you can go and save the response. So you can save that to a GeoJSON file, and then you can um, hopefully bring that into the GIS manually, at least. Um, so this is the information. You can have, have a look at what is returned. Um, interestingly, there is this total records and page and limit and count. So you can find out, um, you know, that you've got 155 records. And that's it for tutorial two. Uh, the next tutorial, we're going to be routing Script is up here. So in the scripts folder, you have um, there's three scripts here. One is to convert it to a shapefile, one is to do database, and one is to send it to Arcus Online. Now, Arcus Online, you need to have an Arcus Online account. So I would recommend you running this one or this one. If you've got QGIS, run the shapefile one. If you have Geo database, you can try out the Geo database. Now, firstly, to run it, you have to um, let's open up the editor. Make sure that these parameters are correct. So you might have unzipped it in an E drive or, or a D drive, but make sure this is where your folder is for your shapefile, and then put in your key here. And all you have to do is run this now. And fingers crossed everything is OK. And so that was pretty quick. So that ran pretty quick and you will find that in the shape file folder you will have the shape file so it's split it up into lines and polygons and if i go into the 
um, I just probed a few the shape files. Just so I can see that. You'll see I have the um, points in line. So I'm going to bring that in. There we go. We have the data. Now, with the script, when you first run it, it doesn't create a projection file. So you have to go into, um, in Actis Pro, you use the defined projection tool to assign a projection, which is I've assigned a GDA 2020 projection to this data. So if you go to data management, projection, and define. So if, if, if you run this um, script for the first time, and um, it, it could end up not sitting over this base map. It could be somewhere, and it's all blank. So you have to assign this uh, projection file. And so what you do is you go to your feature class, and then you put in the coordinate system, just GDH 2020, projected coordinate system. No, sorry. Um, geographic corner system is not projected, sorry, because it's still in uh, lat long. And then you run this and it will assign the projection to the shape file. For the, um, I just, no, for the QGIS users, uh, there should be a similar way of doing that. Yeah, um, I think in the documentation, you got to go to the, so you got to go to the properties and set the corner system, and then you got to actually export that to a PRJ file. Now, if you're doing that with Geo Database, um, I've already got a schema defined. So in the Ritz Geo Database, let's go back to here. And so my Geo Database is this Ritz. This one, this here. So before, um you actually uh if, if you're starting you and you're 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 creating the feature class you, you need to know, create all these fields that you want first and then you can run the script but here i've already done it for you i've already created the feature class and i know what columns i need but if you were doing it from a blank um feature class, you have to create a new feature class and then um, manually add in all the fields and the fields that you want will be defined in these properties. But just use mine, already defined. The next step um, that I've got in the tutorial is something you probably won't be able to do here in the, in the workshop because you need to have an Arcturus Online account. So I do have um, an Arcturus Online account. And what I'm demonstrating here is that I've got feature layers. And so the unplanned feature layer is here. And I could set up the script to run in a scheduler. So every maybe two hours it can run and it will update this data. And what I have here is I've got planned and unplanned um, disruptions, and I've got um, hard rubbish collection layer. So we have trucks that go out and pick up hard rubbish, so they can actually use this map to determine which locations have roadworks, and then they can avoid those areas. So if you do have ArcGIS Pro, you can go into this project and then you can probably go and publish this map to your ArcGIS Online. And then you can run this, this script for the ArcGIS Online feature layer, which is this one here. So that completes tutorial three. Uh, thank you all for attending this workshop. And if you have any questions, you can contact Kim or me.